It's October 2012. You're 19 years old. Another player approaches you, calls you insane, tells you to kill yourself. Enraged and enticed, you respond back with empty threats. You spend the next six years of your life behind bars. This is the story of Josh Pilat, how and why he grew up in jail over an empty threat he made on RuneScape. It's just dark humor, obviously a joke. Spent six years in jail for being too edgy in the game. He's gonna be for rude awakening. We need my fucking hold his ass. Out of anger, Josh responded saying that he would not only kill himself, but also take his school out with him. If you've been on the internet long enough, you see this all over the place. Even his inmates and the guards at the prison that he's being held at have said, like, they don't know why he's here. When he first hit the yard and shit, I was like, okay, that's white boy. They gonna fuck him. Nobody is harmed as a result of you being concerned that a particular child in school might act out violently. He is helped in most circumstances. Because it's well known around the world that the U.S. justice system is just pure, absolute smegma. I was in the <laughs> one diaries. house in Mississippi that didn't have a damn gun in it. Like, the only house in the entire South that didn't have a gun, and that's where they arrested me. I didn't have a pocket knife in there. BB gun, nothing. No CO2 cartridges, not a gallon of gasoline. I mean, like, straight up nothing. They made Josh go under psychiatric evaluation, and the psychiatrist deemed him as a mentally stable person who isn't going to hurt himself or others. I watched him grow. I watched him grow from a boy to a man, and he learned a valuable lesson by talking shit on stupid ass video games. Sorry to interrupt, super quick, my girlfriend and I make RuneScape themed figurines out of hard plastic instead of flogging things like t-shirts. We don't have much in stock because we can't make many of these things every week, we're very busy, but right now there is now super smooth jads in stock, only a few of them left, they're really heavy, they feel like a ceramic or a glass, we've put a lot of work into making them look this nice. Once they're gone, we can't make any more until we catch up on the current orders, it could be a month or so. God tier mouse pads ship next week, 4 cath pre-orders are now open, and air fresheners are in stock as always. Link is in the description, thank you so much. Many kids spend a lot of time on their computers nowadays playing video games. Super Columbine Massacre is one of the games they're playing. 90,000 free copies of it were downloaded off the internet just last week. You may have guessed that it is based on the murder of 13 people at Columbine High School in Colorado in 1999. Why would you even make a video game that would relate to something so, so tragic? It's October 4th, 2012. Josh is playing RuneScape. He's chatting with his friend in the Grand Exchange. His friend is encouraging him to download Super Columbine Massacre, a game that was unanimously condemned by media as a monstrous worshipping of terrorism. Josh actually gets into an argument with his friend, mainly saying that the game is not cool. This is when another player approaches, not even seeing the whole argument, and proceeds to call Josh insane, telling him to kill himself. Josh, 19, drunk, responds saying that he will, along with telling him that he's going to take out his local high school with him, quote, recreating Columbine. In Josh's words, I went full send on it. <laughs> Man, I was going hard on this kid. He was going hard on me. He said, told me to call him on the phone and blow my brains out. I went pretty hard with it, man. And I said, if I have anything to say about it, that shit can be gravel or something like that. Or that school can be gravel for all I care. And that word gravel actually got me an extra charge, transmitting threats to destroy buildings by means of fire and explosives because I specifically <laughs> said the word gravel. To quote the case, in game, Josh told other players that he planned to commit suicide, but it would be a waste just to kill himself, and so he had to kill other people first, stating that he would need at least two guns, backup clips, Molotov cocktails, and pipe bombs, all of which he was going to use to level Oxford School, telling players to look for the last name Pilot on the news on the 4th of the 20th of the 13th, because that is the anniversary of Columbine. Even the day that he said he was going to carry out this terroristic threat was on a weekend, so the school wasn't even open. Quote, I can't wait to blow the brains out of skulls. The world is going to know my wrath. God damn it. 
but you had absolutely no weapons in your house. Nothing at all. Oh, it, it, they even admitted that we didn't have sharp knives in the kitchen. The case gives a glimpse into how one-sided the arguments became. It glosses over all the points that prove Josh was just making an empty threat. He wasn't actually going to go through with it. After the conversation with this player, Josh actually said, quote, it's called sarcasm, dude. But this was supplied in a separate set of messages from Josh's account supplied by Jagex. And on the bad advice of his lawyer, the feds agreed to having this separate file of more messages from Josh thrown out. So he wasn't able to use him literally saying it was sarcasm as a counter argument. So he wasn't kidding when he said he went full send. After this, the other player writes knock knock insinuating that the police will be at his door shortly, alongside actually reporting Josh in-game. No, but the kid yeah. reported me to the game company. He reported me for breaking the game rules. He was trying to get me kicked off of the game, but instead he got me kicked off of society, I guess, because they called the FBI when they saw it. Later that night, Oxford Police Department receives two calls. The first is from the RuneScape player who had been arguing with Josh. The second was from Jagex LTD, the company behind RuneScape. They had received this report and decided it would be best to call the authorities and they provided all of the information they had on Josh, who he was, where he was located, alongside the chat logs from earlier that night. Good morning, breaking news. At least four students shot at a high school just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. If you don't want to pr propagate more mass murders, don't start the story with sirens blaring. The school day had only just begun when the attacker struck. The 17-year-old's three-hour rampage ended in his own death. Dressed in black combat gear, the gunman opened fire at random. To better understand why the United States pursued Josh so heavily, you have to look at the political situation surrounding school shootings leading up to October of 2012, and then going forward into 2014 when Josh was actually convicted. Just between January and October of 2012, there was seven school shootings. Leading up to the time of his conviction in 2014, over 40 more school shootings took place. Shooting at a university with multiple people killed. The site today of a mass shooting and this time, gunfire aimed at elementary school children. Santa Monica College remains on lockdown. Here's what we know at this moment. Their school, 30 miles north of Seattle, was evacuated after an armed student opened fire Friday morning. I've had to make statements like this too many times. For the United States, this was becoming an ever more hot potato. It was a recurring pattern of these shooters detailing what they were going to do months before on social media and nothing happening to prevent it. And so with Palat, they made it a show of, hey look, we have one and they gave him the book. Even though anybody who objectively looks at the case doesn't come to the conclusion that Josh was going to carry out this act. I'm not mad if they came and tore up my shit and checked this out. Maybe even, you know, some counseling, some probation. I can understand that, man. I'm down with that. But them fuckers sent me to prison, man, when I was 19, you know? Dude, by the time I get off paper, it's been almost 10 years. I'm not Absolutely. saying I shouldn't have been punished. I'm not saying that what I did was okay, but the punishment just didn't fit the crime, man. It was now October 8th, 2012, and the FBI had obtained both a search and arrest warrant for Josh Palat. They were like 50 field agents, man. They were all over my house. They were on top of it. They were climbing up the sides of it. Guns out, just ready to go, just trying to smoke somebody. They took as evidence every device in the house which could connect to the internet. They found he had created a folder on his PC titled 4chan, to which he had downloaded various pictures of murderers. Included in his collection was the Columbine shooters. His mother, in an interview, later explained that she was a former political science major, and her and Josh had a shared interest in true crime. Josh liked to share stories of various murders on 4chan. Furthermore, the FBI found on his computer a downloaded copy of the Anarchist Cookbook, which contains often ridiculous and impractical ways to create drugs, bombs, improvised weapons, etc. In there, but everyone had Anarchist Cookbook. I fucking remember middle school, that was big for me. This was definitely a failure, and the Anarchist Cookbook, whoever wrote it, just wasn't thinking. Prosecutors used these findings to paint a villainous picture of Josh as somebody who had been planning meticulously to recreate the Columbine shooting at his own local high school. In the States, the prosecutor's job is to make sure that you're found guilty. At all costs, the government doesn't want to be proven that they're wrong. 95% of defendants accept plea offers. Man, the government will just never say, 
we, we raided his house, we checked it out, we don't think he's a threat, it's all good, we did our job. Your client signs the paperwork, admitting to something that you believe in your gut he did not do. He could go to trial, but a judge may detain him, which means waiting in jail for months, if not years, before a jury hears the case. They gotta say, we're losing face here, arresting teenagers, rather than saying, hey, we checked it out, we're gonna say, he did it, we're about to go hard, we're about to make ourselves look like we just saved somebody. The idealist in you hopes that your client will fight, but the realist in you recognizes that if he loses, he will go to prison, potentially for decades. They even had two of Josh's ex-girlfriends testify against him. One of them was caught lying two times on the stand, and the other one has since come forward saying that she was coerced into giving a false testimony. For what it's worth, they also both apologized to Josh, telling him that they felt like they had no other option but to lie. The sad thing about Josh is that he was naive about the legal process when he was first arrested. They slap convinced me out of asking for a lawyer. They told me, they said, oh, if you ask for a lawyer, you're just going to be here for four or five more hours, man. And we're just trying to check it out and get you home. They were, oh, yeah, man, we get it. We get it. We get it. And then when I get done, they're, I was like, that's about all to the story. They're like, no, we know there's more to the story. We know there's more. And you're going to tell us because we already know. So if you don't tell us, we're going to charge you. You might as well just go ahead and come out with it. While waiting to be convicted, Josh sat in jail over a year. Eventually, Josh decided with his lawyer that he would just plead guilty. Federal guidelines stipulated that he should have got two years for what he did. So Josh was under the belief, because of the time he already served, he would only have to do another seven more months in jail if the judge gave him the max. However, the judge wasn't having it and decided to give him 48 more months above the federal sentencing guidelines, making it six years in total instead of two. I'm not going to lie to you, if 17 months at that point of stewing in jail before I went to sentencing, I pretty much was like, I'm going to go in here and act however the hell I want because he's not going to be able to give me more than seven months. And at this point, my pride, it's worth it to me to go in here and act like an asshat. And uh, so I went in there and I pretty much walked in there and said, OK, boomer. And he tripled my max sentence and gave me six years. The worst part is the only reason why Josh pleaded guilty is because his lawyer convinced him that no matter what, he's facing 15 years because at the time it was illegal to transmit threats, whether or not there was actually intent. However, shortly after he pleaded guilty, the famous case Alonis versus United States passed in the Supreme Court, raising the bar, meaning that it's no longer illegal to transmit threats so long as there's no intent. If you did the same thing that Josh did then, today, you wouldn't go to jail for it. There's two ways to go crazy in there. You can get involved in the nonsense around her, you can get involved in the nonsense inside your head when you're laying on the metal rack at night staring at the popcorn ceiling and knowing that you've got several more years to do in that hellhole. There were some crazy sons of bitches that I was in there serving time with. I mean, murderers, you name it. There were child molesters <laughs> at the other prisons that I went to, bro. I mean, like, full-fledged, life sentence, hardened convict. I turned 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, all incarcerated. When people speak to Josh, they often say that they will go crazy if they were in his situation. And Josh is the first to admit that, for the first two years, he dwelled on his case and he ripped open every scar in his brain that he could. Uh, I was pretty much like internally in a bad mood most of the time. But after two years, he stopped dwelling and well. The book that was in the autobiography of Malcolm X that I really appreciated and it changed the way that I looked at my time. Turn your cell into your school and your monastery. Doesn't matter, that doesn't mean you have to be Muslim, atheist, Christian, whatever, man. Get right spiritually, internally. Use, your, use the time to educate yourself. Not even necessarily for activism, man. I read like 900 books in there, man. And of course, six years is a long time to experience a ton of crazy shit and meet a load of interesting characters. But it turns out that T was in the receiving position of what was occurring in this particular vegetable closet. They mob up and they play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, which really bummed me out because I was like, man, I wish I could find a bunch of dudes that weren't Shomos to play D&D &D with. That'd be a great game. Anyway. I can't fucking play it. <laughs> the rumor was true that Game Tight did indeed somehow acquire bloody used tampons from a female CEO. And I'm young looking, bro. I'm not fucking around with those guys. They, they're all sitting around watching TV. He pulls out his paperwork. They're like, how long are you serving, big horse? He's like, I got about three more years left. They pull out his paperwork and they look at it. They go, dude, you got 600 months. And he goes, nah, I got 600 weeks. They go, bro, you got sentenced in months. This is the feds. You're doing fucking 50 years, dude. And he actually like fell out and passed out and they had to take him to medical. I was glad that like we had guitars there, you could chuck our guitars, and I just like I'd go out to the rec yard and uh, I'd check out a guitar and just play for like seven hours a day for two and a half, three straight years.
So what the heck is Josh Pilot up to nowadays anyways? Well, since getting released, he's become a happily married father to a beautiful baby girl. He streams full time, RuneScape included, believe it or not. He always has his private messages on. You can message him if you want. And instead of being the whiny nihilistic troll that he once was, he's all about spreading love and positivity, trying to help people through hard times in their lives because he's been through a lot of rough times himself. He also uploads a series on his YouTube channel that he calls Tales from the Jungle, covering his stories from prison, and I used a lot of those clips in this video. A lot of really funny stuff on there. I've left all of his links in the description. Heck, he streams 5 days a week, he might even be live right now. If you drop in there and say hello, I'm sure it would make his day. And that's it! I hope you guys enjoyed watching, if you want to see more, subscribe, and don't forget about those little Jad figurines, link is in the description. Until next time guys, love peace and chicken grease.